I simulated almost 500 Overwatch duels to figure out which Overwatch hero is the strongest in combat. Using Blizzard's 100% lore accurate hero AI, this is the bra. We can simulate exactly how each Overwatch hero would fight in a duel to determine the most accurate winner. There are some heroes that have been disqualified since there are not any 100% Blizzard approved AI for them, but we will manage with our other 32 heroes. It's basically Overwatch 1 all over again. The most disappointing performance is not from who you think it would be. A character that normally dominates high ranked play is now sitting in last place with only one win and that is Widowmaker. Widowmaker went so long without getting a win that we ended up finishing hers before some of the other heroes. And against all odds, the only person she was able to beat was Sombra. Wait, did she just translocate? Oh my god! She translocated! Sombra isn't exactly the most consistent when it comes to dueling. The Widow who got clapped by every single hero in the game got lucky with Sombra when Sombra was being pretty inconsistent and just kind of died. <laughs> However, our second worst is also a sniper with it being Hanzo. Hanzo had a pretty strong start being able to beat Ash, but as the duels kept rolling in and rolling in, Hanzo only ended up with 7 wins, which is actually a big improvement compared to Widowmaker, but he still did the second worst out of all the heroes. This is probably because he has a projectile, and the 100% lore accurate AI will aim for the head, but it's a projectile so it's gonna miss when they're moving. So the only time he got a clean one shot, was when he was point blank or they just kind of didn't move. With a two-way tie for third to last, we got Mercy and Symmetra. If I had to choose a third to last place, I would choose Mercy because Symmetra actually got three draws. Symmetra had the most draws out of all the heroes being three, but she didn't win a single one of them. However, since Symmetra did get three draws, I am going to count her up on Mercy. But it is pretty impressive that a support with a pistol, who can't use any of her abilities since she has no teammates, was able to do so well against a bunch of characters with abilities that should do damage in battle. However, Mercy only got 8 wins. Symmetra also only got 8 wins. I should mention that draws are when the two heroes kill each other, so as the tiebreaker, whoever killed the other one first will be the winner of that round. Which is how Symmetra got 3 draws, but didn't win any of them. Next up after Sim and Mercy is another 2-way tie being between Mora and, surprisingly, Winston at 9 wins. Mora was pretty consistent at just sucking people and then when she faded for some reason everyone was able to predict where she went so that really hurt her. While Winston for whatever reason was a freaking pussy. Winston would get someone to low health and then would just kind of walk away for some reason. I guess Winston is just kind of a pacifist who knows. Regardless, Winston's performance is actually really bad because the tanks did really well in these duels. Winston was easily the worst performing tank. And it really shows with our statistics. Hey, this is editor me. I don't know why, but I skipped Ash, Sombra, and Tracer at 10 wins. I don't know how I managed to do this, and I just noticed this after I had finished the recordings. So Ash got 10 wins, Sombra got 10 wins, and Tracer also got 10 wins. But Tracer won the most draws with two, so I put her higher than Ash and Sombra. Well, Ash and Sombra won 10 duels flat. Actually, as a matter of fact, Ash won a draw, so technically, Ash would be slightly stronger than Sombra, and Sombra was a very inconsistent character. She would sometimes sit in stealth and then just wait. And even when she did attack someone, she would sometimes translocate away and then the character she was dueling would shoot her out of the sky, really ruining her momentum. And she would do this even if someone was low health. So it makes sense that Sombra only got 10 wins out of 31 battles. Next up after our second two-way tie is actually a three-way tie, of course. Ana, Brigitte, and Genji all got 11 wins. Ana was able to outlast some opponents. Brigitte was also able to just beat some people's skull in and protect herself. While Genji just kind of dove people and killed them sometimes. Brigitte actually got this really impressive kill on a certain someone, but I'm not going to spoil that till a little bit later. I want to also mention that Ana successfully had the longest round in the entire duels being against Mei when Ana would shoot may heal herself and then may would get low health cryo freeze and then ice wall and this would happen so many times over and over again to the point of where i about had to intervene but luckily may i think just gunned down anna so thank you anna for making me waste like five minutes of my life watching you duel may next up after the three-way tie is kiriko kiriko had 12 wins and she didn't tie with anyone. So she did 13th 
the worst. I It's kind of hard to rank these when I have them actually backwards right now. I really should have ordered these from winner to not winner. I'm pretty sure that Kiriko lost a lot of battles simply because she kept missing, kind of like what happened to Hanzo. However, the difference between Hanzo and Kiriko is that Kiriko has more sustain, and I guess she just hits more shots than Hanzo. After that is another three-way tie, of course. And that's between Lucio, Junkrat, and Sojourn. Lucio obviously had the most boop kills out of everyone. You do not know how much me and Grey Yeti were just popping off every time a boop kill happened, so Lucio was one of our favorites to watch. With Junkrat being one of the most inconsistent characters, like, we did not know when he would win or lose. Junkrat even caused our first tie when we were doing this, so we had to do a special ruling just because of him. Nobody died to Total Mayhem, though, which is really disappointing. And then Sojourn was kind of reliant on her railgun. Pretty much, if she hit it, she won. If she didn't, she had a chance, but she most likely lost. So those three got 13, while Cassidy and Reaper, oh god, McCassidy, got 14 points each. I actually just realized that Cassidy and Reaper got the same points. Oh no. Cassidy and Reaper getting 15th and 16th place means that we are now halfway through our list. So anyone from this moment on will be considered above average. Cassidy pretty much put out an average output with an average amount of survivability. So he did average, hence why he's the middle of the pack. And Reaper actually would always end up in this freaking basement. If he took more than 50 damage, he went into Wraith form and then just kind of stood around. It actually ended up hurting him more than helping him, kind of like what happened with Mora. But he has just enough health to get to a health pack and then just sustain until he can win some battles. He even was able to topple some pretty impressive heroes. So overall, good performance from two middle of the pack DPS. Speaking of DPS and basements, May got 16 wins and May was the most torturous hero to watch. He would always end up in the basement, she would always cryo freeze and then would immediately wall off cooldown. But yeah, Mei would use every ability she could to stall out the duels until somehow she won. And what's even worse is that if she couldn't secondary fire them, like tanks for example, she would just drag out the battle forever. And I wanted to stab myself every time I heard Mei is next. So yeah, Mei, you got an above average score. Congrats, but I still hate you. However, next up is my boy Bastion with 17 wins. Bastion had one of the funniest encounters where he would just go into sentry form and melt the, the other person or die trying. Every time it was Bastion, I got excited. His were short, easy duels where he either obliterated the other person or died trying. 17 wins, pretty impressive. But next up, we got our third three-way tie, of course. And that is between Baptiste, which is really impressive, Soldier 76, which Baptiste and Soldier being next to each other is actually kind of funny. Support, by the way. And Senyata, again, another support, by the way, moment. These three actually have a pretty good theme of them just being good DPS characters, with only one of them being a DPS, but still. Senyata, unlike Kiriko, was able to hit his shots consistently because I think his projectile speed is just fast enough. So he was able to duel a lot of characters. Soldier had really good aim and it would just melt people and Baptiste was basically the same way. This was actually on top of the fact that 100% lore accurate Baptiste never used immortality field. So he could have been much scarier. Next up with just one more win is Doomfist. Doomfist did a lot better than I thought. Doomfist felt like he'd be a pretty inconsistent character, but I guess I was wrong because he won a lot of fights. This is probably because a lot of heroes did charge his gauntlet, so he was able to power punch them. But even then, I thought he was going to lose a lot of duels. However, he won a lot of them, actually. And having a 60% win rate is pretty good. Next up after Doomfist is another two-way tie between Drunker Queen and Torbjorn. Torbjorn is actually our highest DPS on this list. And I should have mentioned that Zenyatta slash Baptiste are the highest supports. But Torbjorn is up here contending with the Titans. Torbjorn actually would beat out Drunker Queen because he did win a draw. But regardless, Drunker Queen was able to melt basically any DPS and support in her path, with a few exceptions. While Torbjorn just had very consistent shots and would kill a lot of characters who couldn't kill him fast enough. So now we are getting into the top six characters. These are the ones that did really well almost every single time and only lost to each other. Well, okay, after Reinhardt, of course. Reinhardt got 24 wins and was kind of inconsistent. If he got to really, really low health, he would pussy out. And what really sucks about that is he would get many scenarios where he could charge someone and kill them, but just didn't because he was super low health. And then sometimes when he was at like one HP, he would just charge randomly and get himself killed. It was really weird. Regardless, Reinhardt was probably one of the most fun characters to watch just like Lucio because he would just pin people randomly and get a one shot. 
Like he could be losing so badly, then just click the charge button and get a kill. It was amazing. I have to go find it, but I'm pretty sure he knocked someone off the map with this charge too. It was it was wild. We freaked out. Reinhardt, very, very fun. And we actually will be getting back to him in a minute. However, speaking of Titans is actually Ramatra. Ramatra got 25 out of 31 wins. And he was just a very consistent and tanky hero. After that, in fourth place is Orisa. You may notice that these are all tanks, and I'm pretty sure I already said that. But the reason I mentioned this is because the tanks were on a winning streak. All of them. None of them had a loss except for Winston, of course. And the first one to get broken was Orisa. And you want to know how it happened? While fighting Brigitte, Orisa got knocked off the map by her, causing our first boob kill and first tank to lose besides Winston. Orisa had a winning streak going and lost it because of Brigitte knocking her off the map. Brigitte has no right to be in Orisa, but somehow she did it. And with our 100% lore accurate, Overwatch approved AI, and our 100% no flaw format, with absolutely no room for error or mistakes, especially because if we would have done this on another map, Orisa would have won every time. Brigitte will beat Orisa every time because of our one test we did. And you cannot take that away from me. And don't you go in the comments saying that if it, if it was a different map, Orisa would have dominated Brigitte. Oh, that's, I want to be dominated. In third place is Zarya. Zarya was a really good character who just kind of beamed everyone. Very fun character to watch because she was basically the tank version of Bastion. She won most of her duels, only being beaten out by Maga, Sigma, and Baptiste, which is, again, really weird that she lost to Baptiste. But 28 wins out of 31, pretty good. And finally, we get up to Maga and Sigma, the top two. And what if I told you that they both won 30 out of 31 fights? Throughout this, I had my bets on Maga, and he was just obliterating every single hero with his amazing, perfectly lore accurate accuracy, where he could look into the sky and still somehow hit people. And then Sigma, who just hit every single spear for some reason and was able to block the damage because no one walked around his shield. Who was going to win between these two titans? Sigma won. Sigma won their duel. So does that mean Sigma is the best character in Overwatch? Well, how did he lose, though? Well, how did Sigma lose a battle? He lost because Giga Chad Reinhardt came past his shield and beat his face in. However, even though Sigma did tie with Maga, since their duel ended with Sigma winning, we must crown Sigma as the best lore accurate Overwatch character. Which makes sense with his lore that he can control gravity. Can he control time? I'm not sure. He's the oldest, wisest. He's also a tank hero with a shield and the ability to regenerate shield health and have a kinetic grasp to have over health. Honestly, Sigma's a pretty good character. While Maga just has pure damage, able to kill everyone but the old man. So Sigma got first place, Maga got second, and Zarya got third. Realistically, I'll be honest with you guys, I understand that if I were to emulate all of these duels, I'd probably get a different result, which is why we can always do it again. But with college and work and all that, I do not have the time to do this a million times. Also, it was kind of boring just sitting there doing 500 duels. This took like multiple hours over two days. And if you want to join the Discord Community Nuzlocke, where I will let you guys choose my Pokemon's moves. And if your Pokemon die, you get kicked from my Discord. <laughs> Okay, you get K from the call, not the Discord. Feel free to join my Discord slash Twitch and you can become a Pokemon. Anyways, like and subscribe and I'll see you guys later. I'm going to be honest, I was a little unhinged this video. I'm very sorry. I just, I don't want to do the voiceovers today. So I just kind of did them and I'm not happy with these voiceovers, but I don't really care.